again my friends and today I'll be building and painting the M4 Sherwin Mark 1 from Airfix and from their vintage series of kits which are repackaged and this kit actually comes from a 1968 mold a very old kit and the details as well as the plastic are very obvious and show their age as you can see here Now I can begin cutting off the, all the parts with my sharp side sprue cutters. <laughs> Kinda looks like a tank scrapyard when you look at it. And of course, with this being an old kit, it wouldn't be without its issues. And here, the suspension arm fails to fit into this into the idler wheel, or actually the the road wheels here because I have to drill it out with my hobby knife as I finally am able to fit it back in. And of course the suspension fails to fit in the side of the hole so I have to forcefully fit it in and by hopefully melting the plastic with our liquid cement and it takes me a minute here to struggle to fit it into place and that's what happens when you get from a old model kit. Oh, and there's also this final little part to finish the suspension. Fast forward ahead of time, and now the model is finished. The rubber tracks were surprisingly excellent from this old 1968 kit. But now we can begin mixing our own base coat with buff, green brown, and US olive drab, as I want this to be a nice faded and color look especially since this is such a small scale. I actually also ended up adding on some white so that it will look even lighter. I did not prime the model this time as it will, one, it's not a war games model, it's a static model and it won't really be moved around and touched as much as a figurine per se, but Vallejo paints hold up pretty well if you apply it in enough layers. It may not be as strong as in comparison to Tamiya paints, but this still holds up pretty well. And as you can see, the base coat is very nice and light, which is very easy to work with rather than it being dark. So now we can create our own dark grayish green gray color, I would say. Uh, mixed in with German Grey and our olive drop color. But first, we can now work with the decals that have already been soaked in water. And the problem with these decals is that they have very thick film that is very obvious to see once you see it placed on. Later on, I will try and turn on this film on around the edges so that it will be hard to see. But in the end, you still might catch some points of it. I could add layers of gloss varnish or even the matte medium I have from Viejo, but sometimes you have the case where decals are pretty much almost indestructible or they just come in the very thick film that you see here. The previous colors you saw me mix in the German Grey and the US Olive Draft have been turned into an almost like a wash. I say that is because that you don't want it to be completely like a usual wash like uh, an ink that you would find in a pre-bought bottle. But here you just want it to be almost in between the two. So don't add too much water unless you actually do want to make it into a wash. Then you can go back and retouch certain areas that you may have left any tide marks or any mistakes from making from the wash. But if you actually find it to be difficult to work with, 
with the vehicle paints, you can add soap and water, which will help you remove it, as I have my previous videos on how you can create your own adjustable acrylics. It is you can remove them with just a cotton bud and water. I then mix the previous base coat color you saw me make earlier with Vallejo Flat Yellow so that it'll give us nice, vibrant, and very appealing colors on the model. I then mix the previous base coat color again we used earlier with a lot of white so that it will look like nice fine chips that have occurred on the wear and use of this tank. Now for the deeper, almost oxidized chipping look, we want to use German Camouflage Black Brown, also from Viejo, so that it'll give us a nice, uh, almost 3D effect on the deeper scratches of the tank. Now I can begin painting on the hand painted markings by the crew with ivory, which is a cream white color, which will be very nice as it is not too stark and will not stand out as much as if we were to be using just plain white. And it'll nicely blend in as here I also mix in the, with the color a retarder, which will give me enough time to paint on these markings. I use flat earth to help give me a nice base coat for the tracks. You can also use this by turning it into a wash and by adding it on into layers uh, to weather the lower hull and to act as mud that has been flung up from the tracks. I then use a graphite pencil to help highlight the metal parts and here I just use it to highlight the machine guns on the model and it'll give me a nice metallic sheen without any use of metallic paints. To give me a nice dark mud effect I mix flat earth with black 
to make nice dark stains on the lower hull. I use Iraqi sand and turn it into a wash so that it will nicely give me some color variation on the tracks. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of the model and I'll hopefully see you next time with something even smaller. Trying to pick up the uh, communication from the tank, which is the line of the shore.